uh, in this video we will draw from line 300 onwards all right so we all know that Caliban, Stefano and Trinculo have left us they have left the stage and their role is over okay but nothing has been told about the future nothing has been told about the fate he is a Shakespeare or the dramatist has so conveniently omitted the fate of Caliban right what would happen to him and then on this so uh, but but we are told that Caliban remains a slave throughout the play and Prospero treats him with contempt till the end so now Prospero uh, he is with the royal court okay now he talks to and he talks to King Alonso where he says sir I invite your highness and your train to my poor cell where you shall take your rest for this one night. So he says that, sir, I'm inviting you and your highness. I'm inviting your highness and your train. Train refers to an entourage. They refer to followers. I'm inviting you and your followers to my poor cell where you shall take the rest for the night. That means where you shall spend your night. Which part of it I will waste with such discourse as I, as I not doubt shall make it go quickly and he says that part of your part of this night i will entertain you with 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 my talks okay and this and uh, and the hours shall pass and your time shall pass very quickly i will make sure that you are not bored the story of my life and the particular accident is gone by since i came to this island now he says that now is the right time, okay, since they have been very eager to hear the story, the strange story of his life, of his preservation. So the, now he says, I will tell the story of my life and give you all the details of my preservation and about what happened um, since I came, since I first came to this island, all right. So you see, next thing is that, and in the morning, I will bring you to your ship. And so to Naples. And the next morning, I will take you to the ship and will go back to Naples. Why does he wish to go to Naples? Where I hope, where I have hoped to see the Neptune of these, our beloved, dear beloved, solemnized. He says that where I wish, I will go to Naples. Where I wish to see the wedding ceremony of my beloved daughter and your beloved son. Okay, by doing this, he is securing the uh, happiness of his daughter. As it is, I have been telling you that uh, Prospero does whatever Prospero has done, okay, is also to elevate the position of Miranda in the society, besides getting the dukedom, okay. And in this way, he shows that he is a very responsible, very loyal and a very loving father. He sees, he has seen to it that his daughter is safe. He sees to it that his daughter is safe. That is why he, that is why he says that I wish to go there, witness the wedding ceremony of my son, of my daughter and your son take place. Then after, what, what will he do? And then retire me to my Milan, where every thought shall shall be my grave every thought shall be my grave means then he says that after after um, the marriage ceremony i will come back to milan where the majority of my mind okay will be spent in contemplating the death will be contemplating my own death okay where the majority of my mind will be spent in the thoughts of my um, own death and that death which is which is coming soon all right which means prospero has become old all right and also i long to hear the story of your life which must take the ears strangely i have been longing to hear the story of your life of your preservation okay of what happened since you came to this island it must be a strange story Prospero, I'll deliver all. I will tell you everything. And I promise you come seas auspicious gales and sail so ex expeditious that shall catch your royal feet far off. 
and he says i will tell you everything and i promise to give you good seal good wind favorable wind and not just that you will sail so fast that you will catch up with your royal navy that means there were other fleet also isn't it there were other ships also that had come along with the ship but the, these fleet had left them long ago so it will not be good if this if these fleet or if these fleet of ships reach before the royal ship so that is why he says that you don't have to worry i will i will make sure that you reach home very safe and sound okay because i'm going to give you favorable wind and good sail not just that i will make sure that you reach far ahead of them of the other ships now uh, he speaks to evelyn says is a chick chick means a dear bird that is by your charge but he gives the last command to eden he says that uh, now you have to it is it is you who have to take the responsibility of giving favorable ship i mean favorable wind good sea okay calm sea and then reaching them fast it is all in your hands then to the elements be free then i shall free you then you shall be free then you shall be granted freedom and fare thou well he bids farewell to evil and and then to the elements be free means then you shall be free as the thin air okay then you shall go back to your uh, back to your place that means you, sh- you can go back to nature now he talks to king olonzo he refers to king olonzo and he says please you draw near please come with me to my cell now epilog what is an epilog an epilog is a piece of a writing okay or, or it is a speech which is which is given at the end of the book and uh, especially it is done to give a closure okay that means the play has come to an end and then the or the main protagonist or the author or the writer or the dramatist speaks to the audience or speaks to the readers okay here also now who is the main protagonist it is none other than prospero because the entire play revolves around prospero his revenge his betrayal i mean his betrayal his revenge his forgiveness and reconciliation so therefore now uh, we are at the end of the drama okay and uh, before leaving us before prospero leaving us what does he do he speaks to his audience he speaks to his readers okay this is nothing but again it is uh, the mouthpiece of william shakespeare all right it is uh, it uh, prospero whatever he says is um, is an echo of uh, shakespeare's own life all right so as i said opposite to epilogue is a prologue prologue is done um, before the drama starts or before the play starts or before um it's a, it's a it's also a piece of uh, writing it's also a piece of a speech which is given before the play starts okay at the beginning of the um, at, beginning of the text which is given at the beginning of the text by the author or by the main protagonist is the prologue now epilogue as i said these are this this is the concluding speech it is called the afterword all right it is in in an epilogue the main character or the main protagonist or you could call it the dramatist or the author comes up and then he speaks or he speaks to his audience or he speaks to his readers right so everybody has left the stage, stage now they are all in the royal court the royal court members are also inside prospero's cell we do not know when they'll go whether they'll actually go or not okay and then uh, whether they land up in naples or whether they continue to live on this uninhabited island okay their their rule is over they have already bid goodbye to us okay now is the master okay of this play who talks to us and who who bids us farewell now uh, prospero now my charms are all overthrown and what strength i have is my mine own now i have renounced all my magical power and all that i have is my own strength okay it is my own strength that i have to rely on and this strength is devoid is completely free of magic okay so he sees that and 
I have my own, whatever I have is my own strength, physical, is my own uh, normal, is, is a normal human being's strength. Which is most faint in comparison, it is very, it is very faint. He says that it is, uh, my strength is very weak. He was powerful only because of his magical spells. Isn't it? He was powerful only because of the slaves. Or, I mean, only because of evil. Okay, but now that he has given up his magic, he has broken his staff, he has thrown his magical books, he has drowned them in the depth of the ocean. Okay, and he has uh, discarded his magical robe. Okay, so where lies his port where light is potent art? So he says that now I am a normal human being. I have now uh, I am now reduced to an ordinary man, just like you and me, and I do not have any strength. My strength, whatever I have to rely on, is my own strength, and I my strength is not very strong. Okay, and I am not very uh, I I'm I'm not very um, potent. Okay, and after all, my strength is weak. Now it is true I must be here confined by you or sent to Naples. Now he says that it is your choice. Okay? The choice lies in your hand. Whether you want to keep me confined, whether you want to keep you want me to continue being imprisoned on this island. That is why he calls it every time he uses the word cell. Isn't it? Cell means it's is actually being imprisoned. It's no better than imprisonment. Alright? But what he says is it's all up to you. Whether you want to confine me or whether you want to send me back to Naples. Let me not, since I have my dukedom got and pardon the deceiver, dwell in this bare island by your spell. He says that do not keep me here. Okay? Do not keep me. I have lived here enough. It actually brings tears, you know, such a moving uh, such a moving line it is. He says, I have got my dukedom, okay, and I have also pardoned my betrayer. Who is his betrayer? Antonio, who had usurped him, right? And uh, I have pardoned, uh, I have I've pardoned my betrayer and other betrayers also and other deceivers, okay? And I have also got my dukedom. Now I need to take care of my dukedom, okay? I need to go back. So please do not allow me or do not keep me here. Do not let me dwell. Do not let me live on this island, on this barren island, okay? Uninhabited island, very, uh, uh, you could call it a deserted island. So, but release me. Please help me come out of this. He, he feels activated, yeah? He feels imprisoned. And there are many things that had imprisoned him. What was it? It was not just isolation. Okay, it was not just the island, but it was also it is it, his moral conscience. Okay, it's very important. You know, it, the, your conscience is will will um, is something that tells you uh, what is right and what is wrong. It is something that sets a standard, isn't it? So he says that I feel he feels suffocated because he knows that he is not in the right track. Okay, he knows that he has. He has done something wrong, although he has forgiven. All right, he is somewhere still guilty. He is still being pricked by his own conscience, is by his own guilt. You will know what it is. So he says that please help me come out of this captivity. Okay, please help me come out. Please release me. Okay, from my bands. My bands refer to his. Um, his condition, his predicament. It refers to his magical art. Okay, it refers to his magical, uh, you know, uh, magical, uh, magical band. Okay, and it also refers to his captivity and his constraints. Okay, please help me come out of this. Okay, to come out of this magical bond, or to come out of this captivity, or come out. To, to come out of this place. Okay, please help me do that. Of this constraints. Gentle breath of yours, my sails, with help, with the help of your good hands. All I want from you, public, 
All I want from the readers, all I want from my audience is nothing but a loud applause. Okay? And the wind that will blow while you are applauding, okay, for for this performance will will actually help me, you know, will will actually help me to go to Naples safely. Alright? The wind that is blowing from the from from your hands, okay, will fill my sails, will will fill my the will fill my ship with sail. Okay, it will give me good sail. That means I will mean it is more metaphorical. Okay, obviously the clap will not the uh, the clap will not help uh, fill his ship with sail. It means that I will not go with a heavy heart. Okay, it will help me. The smile, please smile for me, like we say. No, please smile for me. If you smile for me, at least it will make my journey. Um, it will help me. Um, you know, it will make my journey better. It's not that you don't have to uh, travel. It's not that you will just land up in that place, uh, um, you know, but just uh, but what it means is that this has more uh, met metaphorical connotations. It means that you know, if you are happy, then I will be able to I will be able to go home happily. Okay? I will be able to I will be able to live my the rest of my life happily. I will not live in guilt. That is what it means. The the wind that blows from your applause will fill the ship, will fill the sail of my ship. Gentle breath refers to that, okay? So with the help of your good hands, gentle breath of yours, my sails, must fill or else my project fails, which was which was, which was so to please. Now, what is his main objective? His main objective was to please us. Okay? So he says that if I have, you know, if you are not able to um, give me an applause, then I have failed in my objective because I, I was not able to hold your attention. Okay? I was not able to make you happy with my performance. Okay, so all you can do is you now please clap for me. Okay, and set me free. Okay, that way I will be able that 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 will help me. You know, uh, go home happily. That will help me go home cheerfully. Okay, or else whatever my plan and my purpose. Okay, the entire production will be a failure. All my my all my. Professional career will be a failure. This is what actually Shakespeare, Shakespeare means because this Tempest was his last act. This was his last play. So he was bidding goodbye to the theatre, to all the theatres. Okay? He was bidding goodbye to his writing profession, to his uh, writing, uh, uh, to, this write, uh, to this career. Okay? Literary career. So he says that, uh, now please, Please, uh, it is all in your hands, whether you want to release me freely or whether you want to trap me, whether you want me to, to die in, in guilt. Or else my project fails, or else I have not been successful, or else my, the, my objective have failed. Okay, I can say that my objective, or else my objective has failed. Which was so to please. My only objective was to please you or was to make you happy. Was to touch your was, was to touch your soul. Now I want spirits to enforce art to enchant. I do not have anything now. Okay? Neither do I have a spirit have spirits to enslave me, neither do I have a magical power. Neither do I have, neither am I powerful with with you know, uh, with the help of neither am I powerful with magical, with magical art. So, and my ending is despair unless I be revealed by relieved by prayer. So he says that I will die in hopelessness if you do not pray for me. He he wants he wants all of us to pray for him. Okay, otherwise he will die in remorse he will die in guilt unless i be re 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 relieved by prayer which pierces so that it 
that it results in uh, mercy itself and frees all faults. You know, uh, in Merchant of Venice also we are told that the quality of mercy is not strained; it falls as gentle rain from heaven up, from heaven beneath. Is it? So similarly, it says here it says that no matter what uh, uh, what uh, sin we have done, but if we sincerely pray to God, okay, if all of us pray to God unanimously, unitedly, then it, it is so strong, prayers are so powerful that it will be able to penetrate in the hearts of God. It will be able to pierce the heart of the, will be able to pierce the hearts of the gods and thereby inducing forgiveness to others. And especially out here, if you all pray for me, then it will, you know, it will, it will pierce the hearts of the gods. It will get into the hearts of the gods. And it, since prayer is so meaningful that it will grant me, it will relieve me or it will give me freedom. Okay, because I need, I need for, I need to be forgiven for practicing an, unfor an unforbidden art. And that is for practicing black magic. Okay, so he earnestly seeks or asks or requests all of us, all his audiences and all his, his audience and all his uh, readers to pray for him so that God, you know, forgives him for practicing an unnatural art. Going against the forces of nature, scattering the clouds. And then what, what did he do? Uh, like... Um, for setting a conflict between the sea and the store, uh, uh, the sky and the sea, isn't it? So by enslaving others, as you from crimes would pa would uh, pardoned be, let your indulgence set me free. So he says that just as you wish to be forgiven for 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 your crime and sins. I request you to set me also, to involve me also in your prayer and set me free, release me. Okay? I have forgotten, I have forgiven my enemies. Okay? And now I am asking forgiveness from us. He asks for he's asking forgiveness from the audience and from the readers and also from God. He says that he, he is making an earnest request. I've been reiterating the same thing. Okay, I've been reiterating the same points. So he says that I am praying, uh, means I am requesting you all to, to make an earnest prayer to the gods, you know, to forgive me. Okay, so it's like the prayer, you know, uh, you say, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Forgive us our sins as we forgive others. This is exactly what it means. Forgive us. Forgive us from our sins as we forgive others. Just like we pray to God for forgiveness. Similarly, set me also in. Okay? Bring me in. While you make your prayer to God, keep me, keep me in your prayers. Okay? So that I may also be forgiven. Okay? So for okay, so that uh, for practicing the forgiven art. Okay. For for practicing an unnatural art. So that that brings an end to the play. If there is any problem, please feel free to address. Okay. Important questions uh, from this could be could possibly be uh, um, <clears throat> does Tempest have a happy ending? Okay. How does it have a happy ending? And the other one is uh, how is Tempest a tra a tragedy comedy? The other one is Tempest deals with the theme of betrayal, okay, forgiveness, revenge, forgiveness, and reconciliation. Discuss that is there, uh, and what are the other things? Uh, the important or is Caliban marketable? The importance of Caliban's role in the play. And Miranda and others, we know they are the focus of the uh, uh, of this the entire play, especially Pro uh, Prospero, and then okay, but you uh, like you know, uh, it does not really have a good closure. 
we are just told about forgiveness, but we are at the same time we are left. The readers are left at the cliffhanger. Okay, because none of us are told about. I mean, we are not told about uh, Caliban's fate. Okay, uh, and we are not told about uh, Antonio and Stefano. I mean, Sebastian. We are not told about them. There is no hint of remorse from their side. It is true that uh, Alonso uh, asks uh, for forgiveness, okay, and there is sincere uh, penitent in Alonso, okay, but what about those two wicked treacherers, two wicked traitors? There is not a word from their mouth. They don't, there is, like, you know, they don't utter a word at all. Even when Prospero tells him that all that you have to do is give me the dukedom and I shall grant you forgiveness. Okay. And, and moreover, you don't have a choice but to give me. Do you think they reply to this? No. They don't. So, nowhere in the play are we told about uh, Antonio and S Sebastian's atonement. Okay, the, their salvation. Okay, and so there is no sincere uh, reconciliation among Prospero, Antonio, and Sebastian. The other important thing that just uh, that just struck me is it's a, a tempest is a power play okay it is also it is a power play so uh, while we were studying about Miranda and Ferdinand playing chess I think I forgot to mention you about how that how the political wrangle the political contradiction of the two parents of the two families that is Prospero and King Alonso Okay, over the dukedom or over the kingdom, just gets narrowed down. Okay, to the game of chess. That means the uh, the the two children, Ferdinand and Miranda, they reduce their parents' political uh, wrangle over the kingdom to the game of chess. Game of chess is also a political conflict. It's a metaphor for a political conflict over a prize, and then it was. Uh, the political conflict or the, the the feud between the two families okay and the result and the price that they are going to get will be what will be the realm that Miranda and Ferdinand will for will will be the realm that Miranda and Ferdinand will be inheriting okay and another thing is that when Miranda says, somewhere in the play, she, she says, uh, you do not have to, you know, uh, when she accuses Ferdinand that you are deceiving me or you are cheating me, this can again be related to Prospero, who makes a false accusation to Ferdinand. Remember what he does? He says that Ferdinand is a spy, okay, who has come to take over his kingdom. But that that is just a... He, it's a, just a false cry of treachery that he's subjected, that Ferdinand is being subjected to by Prospero. So that is that can be seen in those lines. Uh, Miranda's uh, accusation to uh, Ferdinand. The other one is when she says that I will not, if you are wrangling me for twenty kingdom, then I will not, um, I will still not be. I will still not feel deceived. That can also be taken as a political movement, okay, that may be looming large in the future. A political movement like, like that is like, it's like just forecasting, okay, Foresee, foreseeing that such a political movement may arise or it's looming large before then, all right? And it is also, uh, it's also forecasting that, you know, it's also making uh, you know, it's also trying to say that that their parents, okay, 
uh, have, you know, they, they are, there are some uh, remarks that, that, will, that will always be there between the two families. And that is, uh, um, one is the first one is ambition, betrayal, suffering, and forgiveness. Okay, these are the, these are the political tensions. Okay, so these things will also be, it is also, you know, preparing the audience and preparing themselves that these th that their life is also not going to be devoid of this. Okay, as their pains are remarkable for all these, like ambition, betray betrayal, ambition, suffering, and struggle, and uh, fortitude, and, which is the other one, resilience. So, also preparing themselves for all for the test of time it also means that so please try to see this from the political perspective also and prospero can also be seen as a political leader all right although uh, he he evokes or he generates from us love respect okay and And he he does deserve a heart from us, but at the same time, we cannot he cannot be fully devoid. We cannot keep him fully devoid of his, you know, uh, of his own ulterior motives. He cannot be devoid. Of, he is not a man who is completely devoid of his ulterior motives. Okay, we cannot keep him. We cannot consider that he is a very clean or or a very generous leader also. He remains a master. He prefers to remain a master throughout throughout the show. Okay? But at the same time, he is, he does arouse, you know, uh, he, 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 he does have the power or his qualities does have the power to, to, to evoke sympathy or empathy from his, from his audience. So that's it uh, for Tempest, at least for Act 5 and uh, Scene 1. Please study thoroughly in between the lines. You have to remember everything. Okay, and then once again I'm telling you if you have any problem, then you may... write to me either through whatsapp or through or to phone calls you can you can you can call me and you can i'm always there to help you right so stay safe stay healthy and study well thank you so much